Massachusetts has lost about a quarter of its cranberry farms in the last decade, casualties of an increasingly competitive world market. Left to their own, abandoned bogs most often turn into scrubby pitch pine forest, or they sprout something else. I just thought it would be very sad if we broke up 610 acre farm and had developments all over it. Gloriana Davenport and her husband, Evan Schulman of Tidmarsh Farms in Plymouth, a large cranberry operation they hoped would outlast them. And wanted to have the children take it over and run it as a cranberry farm. This was something I was passing down to them. But the economics of keeping Tidmarsh Farms going didn't add up. Instead, Davenport and Schulman opted for what is referred to as a green exit. Rather than selling out to the highest bidder, they teamed up with the state and Mass Audubon and launched an ambitious plan to restore their land to its original state, a natural wetlands habitat. I had never been involved with a large scale restoration this big, anywhere near this big. Bob Wilbur, director of land conservation for Mass Audubon, saw a grand opportunity at Tidmarsh, one that differed from Mass Audubon's typical projects. Most of the places that I'm involved in protecting, it's about protecting the conditions that are there today so that my kids and their kids can go to that same place and see the same things, have the same experience. Tidmarsh is really different because Tidmarsh, the restoration put the entire landscape on a trajectory of change that will play out over hundreds of years, literally. Restoration means reversing 120 years of human intervention. Dams are removed, the bog churned up, and natural stream beds reclaimed. The plumbing is still there in the ground. So restore the system and then get out of the way and let nature run its course as it heals, as it recovers, as it evolves into the various habitats that it will become. Almost none of the plants you see here were planted in the restoration. Instead, the seeds were buried deep in the peat. Churning the bog surface activates seeds that have been waiting up to 100 years for the right conditions. We figured out that really all you have to do is kind of liberate them, dig up create a little bit of a disturbance on the bog platform, create high spots and low spots, wet spots and dry spots, and you'll get this array sort of magically from buried seeds. From this remarkable seed bank, you'll get this enormous diversity of plants. Chris Neal, senior scientist at the Woodwell Climate Research Center in Woods Hole. An advisor on restoration projects around the world, Neil marvels at the newfound diversity of wildlife showing up at Tidmarsh. Look at these charming little guys. Our interview interrupted by some least sandpipers making a stop at Tidmarsh en route from the high Arctic to their winter grounds in the Amazon. This has been a great success. Some of the more successful wetland restoration that I've seen anywhere, and I've seen quite a bit over the course of my career. But you might find it surprising that the rewilding of Tidmarsh also involves a bit of rewiring. Let's see, five video cameras. We have about 30 microphones, close to 100 sensors that are measuring different bands of light, soil moisture, temperature, all kinds of things. You see, Gloriana Davenport is a retired MIT professor. She saw the restoration as a unique opportunity to study and celebrate the birth of an ecosystem. She founded the Living Observatory, collaborating with her former colleagues at MIT's Media Lab. And it was a really exciting project from their perspective to see how they could put this ubiquitous sensing into nature. Visitors to the Living Observatory website can roam through a virtual Tidmarsh, chock full of data points, cameras and microphones record the increasing traffic in the marsh, river otters, snapping turtles, even herring are finding their way upriver from the nearby Atlantic Ocean for the first time in more than a century. It's a wonderful success story. We often refer to it as the landscape of hope and optimism. Did any of us think it would turn out as spectacularly as it has? Probably not, but it's, it's kind of magical what's happened here, really. I think it's really exciting. The amount of wildlife that has come into this area that wasn't here when we were farming is astounding. 
Davenport and Shulman have kept 17 acres to themselves, retaining a front row seat to this wondrous transformation, their work here done. We're not part of the management anymore. As I say, if people dump trash on the land, it's not my problem. <laughs> but she'll pick it up anyway. I'll <laughs> pick it up anyway, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And in June, Mass Audubon actually hosted a celebration at Tid mm -hmm. Tidmarsh Farm with a planting of the last tree, they like to say. Uh, it marks the end of the four-year restoration project. Right, and Bob Wilder of Mass Audubon says there were a lot of other key players mm -hmm. involved in that restoration. You had the town of Plymouth, you had the State Division of Ecological Restoration, and actually those agencies are working on the restoration of another bog nearby. And really, the result, as you saw, is just beautiful. It's, it's incredible. gorgeous. All right, up next, solar solutions.